we're going to continue on our little theme of uh, lathe maintenance. Now, just a quick note on what we're doing. If you watch my other video, I told you that this bearing liked to leak oil. Now I got to check the actual bearing clearances. Now, there are two main types of spindle bearings used on these lathes depending on the year. This one is a 1950. Um, and these lathes, uh, the, the actual A, B, and C designation um, started in the late 30s, I believe. But there, this one here has plain cast iron bearings. You can tell any lathe that would have that by the split bearing casting. In other words, there is an arm that goes from the back there's no screw back here there is only one cap screw here that squeezes down on this and there's a split right here the other side of this casting is completely solid those are plain cast iron bearings <clears throat> the other type of bearings that were used were bronze bearings now the bronze bearings are they have two screws that hold down a cap that is removable perfectly vertical. There's a screw hole here and a screw hole here that hold down a cap. Bolt bearings are adjusted the same but the bronze bearings have a little bit tighter tolerance. Um, the bearing clearance for the cast iron bearings are, is one to two thousandths of an inch. The bronze bearings I believe are like seven ten thousandths of an inch to like uh, a thousandth of an inch, if I remember right. Those are the specs from South Bend. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, wow, they didn't use any kind of bronze or brass or anything in the, in the bearings. How do they last? Well, they last because they're, they're very, very simple. Um, if you've ever machined cast iron, cast iron is very, it's self-lubricating. It cuts very, very easily. The spindle is hardened and polished the inside of these bearings is polished and they put the the spindle right through it and there's a clearance between the spindle and the bearing there's never actually or hopefully never actually any spindle to bearing contact the clearance is there to allow an oil film that is drawn up by these wicks or if you have the the bronze bearings with the cap on top they'll have an oiler in the top the oil goes down, creates a film, and actually floats the spindle on that film, which is why it's imperative that you have the correct clearance. A little more clearance than you need, oil will tend to leak out. Less clearance than you need, the, the spindle won't float properly, and you'll gall your bearings. So when I first got this, these screws here, this one was just finger tight. This one back here was balls tight. The one up front, even if I put a little pressure on it, it would instantly um, seize the, uh, the spindle. So I actually had to add a shim to the front. The back was relatively within spec, so I left it, but I've noticed that using it after a while, especially on higher speeds, this leaks a lot of oil. It'll leak out of the split over there, and you'll kind of get a big puddle of oil in here after a while and you'll have to keep refilling that a lot more in the front. So I gotta go check the spindle clearance. Now, the way we do the spindle clearance is put a piece of um, aluminum or brass bar in your headstock. I got a piece of three quarter inch aluminum tube because I didn't have solid aluminum, but I have a, a uh, steel bar inside of it for strength so I don't bend it. The, the aluminum's just there so that when you lift up, you don't dig into the inside of your spindle. Now, this is a longer, way longer than I need. You're not going to be grabbing it at the end. You're only going to be grabbing about a foot and a half or so out, right about there. So, set, set a dial indicator up on your spindle nose, but put it right on the register where the thread stops so you have a nice, um, accurate reading and you won't drop your indicator into the threads. So, grab the bar the bar is inserted into the spindle itself at the very least halfway 
you definitely want to pass your Morse taper cut. So that's in there. You want to grab about, like I said, about a foot and a half or so um, out from the spindle. Gently push down. Bef actually, before you do that, just a quick note. Make sure your belt is loose and also make sure your reversing bracket here is in neutral. You don't want anything to, to be pulling the spindle in a direction or a place you don't want it to go. Alright, so gently push down and then zero out your indicator. Now, you want to grab the bar and pull dead nuts straight up like you're trying to lift the lathe by its spindle. And you want to put a decent amount of pressure on there, like 50 to 60 pounds of pressure lifting straight up. And you'll see that you'll see well you you'll see the deflection in your indicator as the entire spindle actually does this so double check what I always do push it back down again because now see I had a little bit of a difference there so re-zero the indicator because now it's settled and pull the nuts up there we go I got about two thousandths of clearance on that. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit better. You can see it. So gently push down. Zero out your indicator and pull straight up. But a thousandth and a half to two thousandths of clearance on the front which is within spec and I'm gonna leave that alone because this one is not leaking oil. Um, the more clearance you have actually the better because the more oil film you'll get in there. My problem is this back one whatever it is now is a little too much and I'm leaking a lot of oil. So let me switch everything back around and uh, set up this indicator to indicate off of uh, the back here and uh, just gonna figure out a decent place to mount that. Now that may, I had to take off the bracket for my switch to be able to get a solid place to mount my indicator. Um, I'm going to have to do this off camera, but it's the same exact way that I did the front. I have to do it off camera because I have to stand where the camera is to do this. Um, also, while I have this open, remember if you watch my last video about the lathe oiling, if you use grease in this, um, this pulley, and you use too much, you'll follow the bearing. Well, a bearing is right there. So you can see, if you overfill this, you're going to squeeze right out through this gap and then follow this thrust bearing in here. So let me go and uh, I'm going to test this and I'll tell you what the readings are and show you how we can fix that. Okay, I just did the test, and um, we're getting almost the same as we are in the front, about a thousand and a half to two thousandths. I get two thousandths of an inch with this just nice and snug. If I go dead nuts, balls tight with this thing, I get about a thousand and a half. So um, even though that's within spec, I do know that it's leaking oil, so I do want to make it tighter. We can go down to a thousand of an inch. So how to do that, take this screw here out don't throw it just take it out and in this split line right here let me see zoom in here even though it's all painted over every single lathe will be there's a shim pack in here so I have to finagle out the shim pack so it's probably gonna take me a while to do that I'm gonna see if I can get in there with an exacto knife break the seal of the the paint and see if I can pry that out. Actually, exacto knife right here.
Let's see if it'll come quietly. Not really. All right, let me work on that. Um, so you don't want to see me playing around with that for the next 15 minutes. So let me get all that out, and I'll show you what the shim pack looks like. All right, these are the shims that I dug out of there. Um, this is a thick one, and this one's a lot thinner. And I don't know if you can tell on this, but you can see outside silver, but the core is brass. See that there. This is laminated. In other words, these pieces peel off, and that's how you adjust your bearing thickness. So I have to peel a piece off of this. So let me see if I can uh, zoom up here real good. You can kind of see it there, so you can peel up a piece. Now let me see if I can get it all off. Off camera so you're not seeing me dig at this for the next 15 minutes. There you go. I just had to get my head in there real close to see what I was doing. So you can see. Now, just peel that lamination right off of there. And now, you're slightly smaller. I believe this is uh, two thousandths thick. Let me mic it up. Yeah, about two, two and a half. So that's more than we need because we only need one thousandth of an inch. So I have to get a um, a shim of uh, one thousandth inch and put it in its place. Cut it out and put it in its place. Now the hardest part is this circle on the inside here. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, at least not on the inside. The, the part that you're mo more concerned about is down here because that's going to be a part that's going to be closest to your spindle. You don't want any jagged edges or anything that you're going to push into your spindle. Even though your spindle's hardened, you still want to keep you know, any pointy stuff away from it. This is where if you have any of those, you know, model making skills, they come in pretty handy. If any of you have ever worked with Photo Etch or anything like that, basically the same thing.
yeah, conversation to go on in there. I can cut all the way through. And this is an, uh, underneath here, this is a um, self-healing mat. If you have a punch that to come from set, then it'll be a perfect time to use it. And there we go. There's our shim. Now we're going to put that in the stack and uh, recheck our spindle clearance. One important note the larger shim, right, if you look at it, See the edge? See that bevel on the end? That's from the spindle. You want to put it back in line with the uh, the edge of the spindle. In other words, you don't want it flipped that way where that's going to dig in. You want it that way right against. All right, we're all back together as you can see here. Um, let me see if we can zoom in on this. Alrighty. Pull down, make sure we're at zero. I'll lift dead nuts up. There we go. We're right at 1,000. So that's a lot better than we were before. Before our clearance was, like I said, about a thousand and a half to two thousandths of an inch. And that's right where we want it. That's right where we want it. So now, actually, the, the shim that I ended up putting in, in there, um, I decided to go bigger with it. Um, I put a, a 2000 shim in there instead of a 1. Uh, now, obviously, I'm glad I did. These are nice and snug. They're not super, super tight. Um, and we're right where we need to be. So I'm a lot happier than that. And that should uh, help out my oil consumption, too. Uh, so that's basically how you would go about adjusting these bearings. Um, the bronze bearings are pretty much the same thing, except you'll have another shim pack on the other side. Let me slide this out of here, and you can see what I mean <clears throat> when I say that this one has the split bearings. As you can see, there's no... Um, there's no split or anything in here. The only thing you have is this split line in the bearing right here. The other ones will have a legit um, cap that'll go right over the top. You'll have a line here uh, and two bolts on either side. Now th those, look, you'll have a pack of shims on this side and a pack on this side. Same idea, just gonna make sure they're both even. Um, well, that's it for Shimming your uh, lathe. I think our, my next project um, might be just a little uh, tap follower, something something kind of quick. That's pretty useful for uh, anybody that wants a quick project to do. Um, digging up just a quick design in my head for the past day or so, and uh, see if we can get to that.